Alright guys, welcome to uh, another beer review. Today it's the third day of our Tesco week. Uh, looking at uh, a few select cuts from the beers that are at the, of this, what? Of this current range of craft beers. And uh, it's been a steady week so far. And uh, today uh, we've got two of the, uh, two of the bigger breweries, I'd say. Uh, in fact, pretty much everyone is well known, aside from, you know, like Mothership and, and London Beer Factory are relatively well known, and there's others. Don't know what point I was trying to make then, but that's uh, such a redundant statement. Anyway, so, this is a collaboration between the two behemoths that are Magic Rock and Vocation. Well, it's a Vocation Beer Brooding collaboration with Magic Rock, and uh, we've got a bit of a Grateful Dead tie-dye going off there. Almost reminds me of Funkadelic as well for some reason. Anyway, and this is a can of their Hang Loose Epic West Coast IPA, clocking in at 7% ABV. Get barreled by bombs of Cascade and Centennial hops and spat out by the classic West Coast bitterness. Piney and fruity with plenty of juice. Expect gnarly swells of bodacious flavour. Nice little write up there. And uh, yeah, so malts are extra pale and cara, hops are cascade, centennial, chinook, and citra. So, all those classic sea hops that we all know and love. And uh, yeah, vocation, there we go. Of course, um, both breweries produced um, some of the more standout beers of the first wave. With, um, of course, was it um, Love and Life and Death, Love and Hate, which. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't that big of a fan of. Um, I've had that multiple times now, and it's just, I don't know, that beer itself doesn't really do anything for me. It's always very medicinal when I've had it. And that's at varying levels of freshness as well when it's been in Tesco's. Uh, Magic Rock, of course, had the monster that was Luminance, which was just beautiful. And um, now you can get a lot of their core range in uh, Tesco's. It'd be nice if we could get um, High Wire Grapefruit, though just because I'm a fanboy for that beer. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, West Coast um, IPA. Uh, the beer we did yesterday, um, the one that was from Mothership, and um, <sighs> Four Pure was a West Coast. Let's see if this has got a bit more of a West Coast like hit to it, as opposed to that one. I mean, yesterday's beer was good. Don't get me wrong. I will buy it again, but... I was just expecting it to be a little bit more flavourful. Let's just leave it like that. Anyway, so beer in the glass then. And uh, yeah, lovely sort of pale golden amber colour. Uh, a little bit of haze in there. It's not a hazy beer by modern standards. Although I hate like when people use that term for... Like, I don't know, are, are New, England, New England IPAs like the standard now? I don't know, are we defining IPAs by them being hazy? Or is it just something that's popular, sells well, and is delicious, so we're just sticking with it until, you know, whatever comes along next? But then what is going to come along after the, you know, the hazy New England IPAs? Are we going to get a resurgence in breweries doing these sorts of beers? Or is it going to be a style? The, the lager seems to be... Um, you know, making a well-deserved uh, return to the spotlight. I called it, if you look on my channel, uh, pretty much 70% or considerably less now uh, was dedicated to the lager, singing the praises of that style. So, um, yeah. It's not down to a beautiful broom from the likes of Don Zoko, Cloudwater, uh, Manchester Union... Um, lost and grounded or anything like that it's just because I, a person who can't even get a um, hundred views in a month um, it's because I was a big fan of lagers but I'm going to stick to that story um, so yeah, I think I think lagers are the thing now, aren't they? especially like unfiltered sort of um, lagers but what do I know? I'm just a stupid person who likes to drink beer and uh, yes, no pants on as you can hear my uh, wonderfully uh, sculpted female looking legs anyway so beer in a glass it looks fantastic pretty much just a lining of head so let's see what we get on the nose but a lining of head is better than no head a little bit sherbety it's got that um, vibration on the phone lovely stuff 
and you've probably heard it once it's rattling with the um, tripod. A little bit of pine in there, a little bit of melon. It's a little bit of a sweet citrusy vibe. Subtle sweet malt character. It's a bit more like a biscuity sort of malt. It doesn't smell as resiny or as dank as I'd expect it to. It's a bit more fruity. Sort of that quintessential fruit pastel aroma, which I do love to pick up. But it smells it smells lovely. It smells appetizing, it's gentle, it's laid back. But there's a nice aroma there. Anyway, smells good. Let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. Oh, that's nice. Mmm. That is lovely. That's IPAs that I love. And I don't get to drink enough of them. I mean, I've always said it. Even I had a bit of a burnout with the New England style. I think because when I was getting into that style, a lot of the breweries still hadn't worked out how to brew a good one. But, you know, look at the standards now. Most breweries who are producing those hazy, you know, innocent smoothie looking IPAs, they're all nailing it to some extent. Um, don't know what point I was going to make. But yeah, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the hazy IPAs. I mean, the likes of Verdant, Dea, um, North, Cloudwater. Do we really need to name drop breweries? I'm loving those beers right now. But this is reminding me of beers that I would go to before these uh, IPAs were, you know, taken over. Um, brewing vats in breweries. It's not a palate wrecker. There is a pronounced bitterness. There is a resiny, resiny character. Funny enough, um, I had my first few spliffs in like a few years last night. And I'm getting those like sweet, sticky flavours. And I'd say it's a very sticky um, beer. So you're not really getting a resiny flavour or not too much. You are getting it, but you're getting that sort of like sticky, gloopy resin character in terms of texture. This is lovely. This is so good. This is what I want um, for a West Coast. Although, don't get me wrong, I love palette records. I love, you know, beers like uh, Citra Ass Down, which I think is like a one of those quintessential examples of that style. That was just like... Bam! You know, big hit of Citra, and you felt it. This is, although it's 7%, it's really easy drinking. Sticky malt sweetness, but there's also a nice sticky fruit pastel-like sweetness, which I do like. A little bit of pininess. A tad of um, oniony, garlicky caramelisation there as well. But yeah, this is just tasting so damn good. It really, really is. I really bloody like that. Definitely think that's the best uh, vocation beer that I've had. And Magic Rock, you know, I know they get shit on because of the whole, you know, take out, well, the buyout or whatever it was. I don't care to remember. They still brew really good beers. Do you know what I mean? And this is a, a great, great example of um, Northern Brewing. Um, it really, really is. If you're looking for a, a palate wrecking resin bomb, you're probably going to be uh, a little bit disappointed. But if you're looking for just a really nice interpretation of an American West Coast IPA with flavours that you don't get to have um, that much now, unless you purposely go out your way just to buy beers like this it's just such a welcome change of pace and that's what i love about these beers um it's like when the new england stuff if i don't have any for a while and i go back to like you know like the basics of like punk ipa or something like that which i do like to go back to or like sierra nevada pale ale 
and then you go back to those uh, New England styles. It's like that with any sort of beer, really, especially like for the likes of sours. <laughs> if you've not had sours for a while, and then you have even the tamest of sour beers, you're going to get a bit more of a flavour bomb on the palate. And this, even though I actually recorded the um, the other beer um, with Vocation and um, Mothership earlier today, this has just tasted so damn fresh on the palate. It really, really is. Beautifully brewed. And um, yeah, just the really nice amount of sweetness and bitterness. And it's a hard one to beat. It really, really is. Um, at this point, it is uh, the best that I've had of the new range. And one that I would happily, happily pick up uh, multiple cans of next time I see it. I'm not going to lie, um, I've already recorded um, the you know, the big boy that everyone's talking about, the Cloud Water versus, well, the Brewdog versus Cloud Water beer, which, it, it, it's spoiler alert, but that's probably my favourite of the whole um, range of beers. But this, definitely, definitely a close second now. Just really fantastically brewed. Um, in terms of a rating then, I'm going to give it a... A 9 out of 10. Um, if it was a bit more resiny and a bit more of a palate wrecker, it'd be a 10 all day. But that's just that's how I like those sorts of beers. Even though I said earlier, this is the beer I used to gravitate to. Just because of how drinkable and accessible it is in terms of flavours. But you're still getting a, a bountiful amount of flavour with every sip. Um, but I do like my West Coast to so have just a bit more of like a, a punch to them. But of course, you know, not everyone likes that sort of sensation, do they really? And uh, yeah, if you want just a very solid um, West Coast IPA that is worth double, if not triple, uh, the £3 price point, then definitely give this one a go. Lovely, lovely stuff from two breweries who definitely know what they're doing. So yeah, if you've tried this one, then let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Are you a fan of this beer? Are you a fan of either brewery? Have you drank any of the uh, new Tesco beers? And uh, love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. I've noticed uh, a few of the ones that are in Tesco's are actually being sold independently by the brewers themselves as well, uh, which I think is really good. Um, gives you a little bit more of a chance to try them. But uh, yeah, if you come across it in your local Tesco's, pick up a few cans of it, worth every single penny really really is and it, yeah it's just taking me back to getting into these sorts of beers which i really really like do you know what i mean oh that's lovely as it's warming up as well even though it's still chilled just get a bit more of a, a distinct flavor lovely aftertaste anyway i've taken up enough of your time on this one um, I've actually need to buy more beers from Tesco's to review because uh, I think there's a few days that I don't have covered. So I don't know what uh, tomorrow's review will be. But um, yeah, hope you're enjoying this series so far. I know it's like a few weeks um, after uh, the beers have been launched, but it's like I've said in a, a few of the other videos, uh, even though they've been launched, sometimes it could take you a month before you see one of these beers um, in a Tesco's. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but I think with this new range, from what I've heard, it's a bit more uh, sensible with the distribution of them. And uh, when stock is low, it's being replenished a little bit um, quicker and a bit more smart uh, than usual. But um, yeah, Tesco's are really enjoying this. And um, especially now because I'm a little bit skint because money's going elsewhere. I know I can get, you know, grade A beers. That aren't going to break the bank. Anyway, thanks for watching and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers.